Hi guys, welcome to 2018. Um, it has been, wow, such a, an amazing year. Um, 2017 was filled with a lot of growth and um, some big learning curves, some challenges. Um, and it was it was many things I'm sure you guys can relate it's it's never so straightforward in that it was a good year it was a bad year it, it can be many different things at many times um, there's, there's a helicopter up there circling the Hollywood sign oh it's a police helicopter I wonder what's going on um, yeah so that's what I love about life is it's constantly in flow and it never is just something that's stuck it's always moving in some form whether it's feeling positive and good and you're learning from it or if it's feeling really gritty and hard and um, challenging and, and um, it's painful and so I think I had a mixture of all of those things in 2017 and um, it was a big year for me in terms of work I was working a lot and I was learning about balancing um, a really intense work schedule with also being a mother and trying to carve out time for myself and um, a lot of the self-care that we're constantly talking about um, having time to be on point in my marriage and have open loving intimate communication with my husband and um, continuing to go deeper with him it was um, yeah it was, it was a lot going on and um, for New Year's Eve, we had <clears throat> a really nice. Uh, I guess it's. I guess it's kind of a um, something that we do every year, but it felt a little different this year because we had new friends come over, and it was New Year's Eve, and we decided to set a, an an intention, hold it, an intention circle, and um, a reflection circle. So. There was about seven or eight of us and we all sat around in a circle and we reflected on the year and the things that we learnt and um, kind of summed up some of our own experiences and what we loved about it and, and none of us like the word resolution, it's not like I have any New Year's resolutions. Um, I have ideas and goals and things that I'm working towards and things I want to continue doing. Um, I have big dreams and, and very big ideas and that's really exciting and this is what this circle was all about. We were sharing what we wanted for 2018 and um, just sharing about all the little beautiful bits of wisdom that we gathered along the way in 2017 and, and how we can utilise what we learned and um, move that into 2018 and our experiences this year. So. Uh, one of the things that I'm really focused on for 2017 is this this um, idea of having more time, which I think it's you know the ever elusive time. It's very hard to um, do everything we want to do in one day, and there's constantly more that we want to be getting done, and we have our to-do lists, and we never get to check everything off the to-do lists, and this idea of the self-imposed busyness and um, how to really organize our time more so that we are actually spending more time and focus and paying attention to the things that we really care about. So I have been reading this book. It's my new favorite book. Thank you to Matthew Good of A Discovery of Witches, my co-star. He got this for Mark and I for Christmas. It's called The Art of Stopping Time. Um, and it was really meaningful because I, I just felt very touched because he knows me so well that I would love something like this. And it says practical mindfulness for busy people, which I'm definitely a busy person. Um, and I've been reading this and it has been incredibly inspiring. One of my favorite things from this book, and I, I, I think you guys should go out and get it if you can, because it's been quite life changing just to read a page every day. And that's sort of the setup of the book. You read one page a day and it gives you ideas and on ways to um, really zone in and focus on the things that you want to focus on. So one of the one of the ideas and the concepts behind this book is um, the idea that we each have a life garden. So we have a big beautiful garden and in the garden we should have 
10 main plants. And if we have more than 10 main plants, we won't be able to water every plant. And we need the plants to thrive and grow. And so it's about pinpointing what those 10 main plants in your life garden are. So for instance, in my life garden, um, my relationship with my husband, and to me, spirituality really comes into that. How to get deeper with him, how to um, have real open communication and reach levels of intimacy um, that feel like we're constantly getting to know each other more and more and more and not settling, just getting deeper and deeper and knowing each other's soul um, inside and out. And I, that is a major dream for me and, and one of our, I think probably the most important goal for us. So that is a, one of my big plants in my garden. And then another plant for me is my children, raising happy, conscious-minded children, um, helping them to thrive and to feel comfortable in the world and to reach their dreams. And so that's another plant. And then so obviously I have my work plant, which is my acting, my career, my discovery of witches is, um, falls into that, uh, the TV show that I'm working on. Then I have your Zen mama and your Zen life. And um, so I really cut it down to my 10 most important plants. And what's amazing is that every day you can ask yourself, how am I watering one of these plants today? And it helps you to really organize your time better. So what I was noticing is that my time was not always focused on one of these 10 things. It was often just getting witted away, doing something else that um, wasn't necessarily that important to me. And it was a time suck. So it was really interesting to, to identify what it was that was taking time away from the things that most matter. And then you can make the necessary adjustments. So just having that frame of mind coming into the new year made me feel really excited because I know that it means that I will have more time to spend on the things I'm most passionate about and I'm most excited about. And I swear every year I have so many of the same goals and I don't reach them. And I think the reason is that I'm using my days in a way that is not, it's not functioning the way I want it to. And it means that I get to the end of the year and I realize, oh, these five or six goals that I had this year, I didn't achieve. And the reason why I didn't achieve them is because I kept on saying I'm too busy. Like, hang on, I'm the one making myself this busy, how can I really focus and pay attention to the things that, that mean the most to me? And so that is what 2018 is for me. And I already feel less cluttered in my brain. And I have this book to thank. Um, it has been really helpful. And I thought, how are we doing on time, Cass? 8.22. 8.22, <laughs> we're good, okay. So I thought I would read out two pages um, so it starts with an introduction, uh, and by the way, it's by uh, Pedram Shojai. We can link to it. We will link to it, says Cassandra, YZL manager, behind the camera. Um, and so it starts with an introduction, which is wonderful, and it sort of sets up this idea of your life garden. And then it has 100 days of practices that you can do to help, um, make sure that you're using your time well. Okay, so I'm just gonna open and see what I open to. Oh, okay. Time on a lake, day 74. Have you ever wondered why lakes are so peaceful? One reason is because they represent stopped time. Think about it. Water comes down and flows through the soil and into a creek or river. It moves and represents the passing of time. You're never looking at the same stream. A lake, on the other hand, is where this flow stops, or at least stalls. The water accumulates and sits. It feeds plants on the edges, fish, bugs, algae, and more. There's a serenity to it that captivates us. It slows us down. Water likes a resting place, and so do we. Today, look to find a few minutes to stop the flow of your day. Find a lake or a pond and sit by it. If you don't know where a body of water is, look at a map of your local area. You will be surprised to find one closer to you than you think. 
It doesn't have to be huge. Make time to get there for this exercise. Now contemplate the nature of the beauty in front of you. Take several deep breaths down to your lower abdomen and settle into your body. Think about the flow of your day like a rushing stream. See the events since the morning and see the water tumbling along your timeline. Come to pr the present moment and visualize a beautiful lake where you've now stopped the flow of your day and you are taking some time to reflect. The lake is deeper than the stream. The water is still and it is quiet. See the difference and bring your thoughts to align with the metaphor. Slow your flow and sit in your lake. Hang here for several minutes and allow the change in velocity to settle in. It is the same water you're accustomed to, but the quality of time has changed. It is now your turn to change with it. Okay, so that was one of them. There was a little bit more, but I'm conscious of the time. Um, all right, let's see what's another one. All right, this one's called, this says day 18, deceleration of time. One of the main reasons people in modern cultures can't sleep is the velocity they carry into their evening hours. Life has become fast and we're all riding that wave all day long. We're getting more done and we are busier than ever. But when the craziness of that lifestyle washes up on the beach of our sleep, we get frustrated and unnerved. We don't leave time for deceleration. This means slowing down to allow for sleep. Sleep is something that we release to. It happens on our own. We don't do sleep. Sleep happens when we relax into it and drop thoroughly into a slumber. The challenge of the modern world is that we race all day and into our evening. We watch our shows, we make our calls, we pay some bills, and then we attempt to slam on the brakes, fall asleep when we finally get into bed. Nature doesn't work that way, and the last time I checked, we come from nature. Today's uh, preliminary practice is to pay close attention to your evening rituals as they turn the corner towards sleep. What are you doing during the three to four hours prior to bedtime? And is it relaxing? The body and mind, <laughs> the body and mind need some deceleration before sleep comes to us. Our ancestors had little access to additional light once the sun went down. That meant less stimulation and less activity leading up to bedtime. What are you doing to slow down in the evening? Per this is perfect for what we're talking about right now. Um, okay. Tonight's exercise is to do some mild stretching about 30 minutes prior to your bedtime. Bring down the lights, settle into your body, brush your teeth and do all of your pre-bed <laughs> rituals first because after five to ten minutes of stretching you ought to move to your bed. This guy probably heard my TED talks and was like, this is so boring. <laughs> um, lie flat on your back, start breathing down to your lower abdomen. After a few breaths, begin a progressive relaxation from your head down to your toes. Take your time and simply relax each body part your muscle, your joints, your organs, and your regions, deeply as you can. Scan all the way down your body. When you've reached your toes, simply continue to take deep breaths down to your lower abdomen while slowly counting down from 10 to one. Tell yourself that you are getting more relaxed and feeling heavier with each number you count down. When finished, simply allow yourself to drift into sleep. This exercise is powerful, but should be coupled with good sleep hygiene rituals. It is up to you to slow down and decelerate. Understanding the different quality of time and how to roll with natural rhythms are the key lessons here. Guys, that's it for now. Mwah. Happy 2018. I love ya.